r slash out of the loop. Sprout Coffee says. What's going on with Fanny Willis? I'm seeing a lot lately about the drama with Fanny Willis and the Trump slash gay election trial. What is going on? Institutionals 4114 says. Answer, if you're a podcast person, the Daily from the Night Times just did an episode on this. Today's actually, Friday, February 16th. What you're hearing about is happening on the side of a larger case. The gist is that Fanny Willis, the district attorney who is in charge of overseeing the prosecution of the trial for attempting to overturn the 2020 election in Georgia, was having a relationship with a lawyer she hired to help on the case. This lawyer was paid by her office. They then went on expensive vacations together. The lawyers for one of the defendants are arguing that Willis, and by extension her entire department, have a conflict of interest, because she is being personally enriched by the prolonging of the case, because her boyfriend uses the money he gets, paid from it to take her on vacation. So the whole case should get thrown out, because the prosecution cannot act in good faith. Willis and her boyfriend insist that they split everything 50 over 50, but that she deals in cash a lot, so there's not clear records of her paying him back. It kind of blew up, because Willis got on the stand to defend herself, and did so passionately. Expressed Out 1824 says. Daily listener here, and yes, a pretty good episode to get the details on this case. I know people think that it has its own agenda, but they actually spun this one right down the middle. I was left thinking there were some poor decisions made that doesn't necessarily shine a good light on Fanny. That being said, the other side of the coin looks way worse, so in no way do I think this means you throw out everything. I just think it's giving the MAGA crowd more ammo when details aren't as clear as they had seemed. Old Gimlet I says. I know people think that it has its own agenda, but they actually spun this one right down the middle. Isn't that pretty much what their agenda is? Splitting the difference between one side's facts and the other side's lies? Bree Kingville says. Answer, Trump's lawyers are using Dan Willis personal life as a way to put her on trial and further delay accountability for Donald Trump's attempt to overturn the election in Gap. Trump's lawyers claim she has benefited from hiring a romantic partner as lead prosecutor on this case. Willis claims he wasn't her first choice, and that she is her own person, and doesn't need a man for anything other than companionship. R slash out of the loop. Lazen Bobby says. What's up with Brad Banduxy retiring after his Four Corners interview? Specifically, I don't understand what was so wrong with what Brad Banduxy said. What is so wrong with saying the act guy retired when he did? What context am I missing? Here is the link to the story. Yatana Thurklin Edcott says. Answer, it wasn't exactly about what he said, but how it was said. He was being grilled by the Australian public broadcaster on why and how the obvious and corrupt price gouging of the Australian public and farmers was taking place, as exposed by figures released by the national regulatory body, the AC. He was verbally backed into a corner, and failing to justify his corruption, so he became frustrated and tried to fall back on an age-old tactic. When you can't dispute the facts, attack the person. He tried to discredit the act guy by pointing out that he had retired, hoping that would demonstrate his data was somehow inaccurate. However the act guy had only very recently retired, and that by no means altered the validity of the data that he'd presented demonstrating corruption. When he was subsequently called out on that juvenile behavior, he panicked and asked to have it removed from the interview footage. When he was told no he panicked even more, suddenly realizing as if for the first time that he was being interviewed by the only media outlet who didn't receive large amounts of money from his company as ad revenue, and thus he had no power to control the media outlet to make himself look good. At this point he visibly panicked even further, had a little tantrum, and tried to run out of the interview. At which point his PR team had to jump in, calm him down and return him to the interview, 
to be grilled on his corruption, which he had just openly displayed by trying to censor a media outlet, and he now had to finish being grilled, with no facts to justify his company's exploitation of the Australian public, in a state of panic and embarrassment. And it was all on film, for the whole country to see in that moment he surely knew how bad the optics were, and that he had just ended his entire career. Corrupt multi-millionaire seer exploiting an entire nation of people who need food, of farmers who provide the food, having a tantrum, and throwing shade at the long-serving regulator who's provided figures which demonstrate the corruption of him and his company, then trying to use his assumed power to be corrupt then and there by censoring a media outlet, then panicking when realizing he hasn't the power or influence to do so against that particular national broadcaster, then realizing how bad all of that is going to look when published, and visibly showing weakness by panicking, throwing a tantrum, and trying to run away. It all happened in a minute or so, but it was devastating to the public image of his company, of his competency to run it, and exposed him as a corrupt, ill-equipped, weak. Let's Burn 00 says. He absolutely did not seem to realize that the ABC is funded by the taxpayers of Australia specifically, so it can't be threatened with no advertising dollars to squash stories. It's funny, because commercial TV in Australia is effectively a lost cause, because this has been happening for over a decade point now. It's too late fix, since their only viewers are people who don't realize that commercial TV is trash. The ABC has lost quality too. But it's so massively absurdly better. R slash out of the loop. Lyag two step says. What's up with links to supposed videos of the border crisis in Eagle Pass, TX leading to videos of other things? I'm in Eagle Pass right now for work, and was doing some reading on the current situation here. I clicked on a couple of links on Reddit, that were supposed to show the influx of illegals at the border, but the links lead to completely different videos. For example, politics aside, how slash what is going on? Eat a Jesus Christ people. I know there is no crisis. I was there I saw it. I was trying to understand the thought process behind it all, by coming at it from the middle. FFS. I've got the narc says. Answer, China and Russia have been conducting a multi-year psyop utilizing Donald Trump and fringe conservatives to start a civil war in the United States by manipulating elections, media, the judicial system, and subverting our economy, health, race relations, environment and much more. T. Bhagavans says. Is that not what's been happening in this very sub lately? Half of these posts are framing questions like there is some big movement to be in the loop about, rather than some fringe sub posting nonsense. Like why is op even on that sub in the first place? Saw top posts in this sub for the last week or so. Seems to be a common theme. Captain Blackbird says. Yes, they are 100% estrosifying, what that is. Ginger Veer says. Answer, it's part of manufacturing a crisis, and creating outrage for attention. Alex Jones does the same thing pretty frequently. Whenever he wants to push a story his staff will google for anything that vaguely fits, then he'll end up screaming about some sensationalized headline that's years or decades old and or halfway around the globe, as if it's brand new and happening right here. The goal isn't to report on anything, it's to inflame fear, panic, and hatred then to turn those emotions into something profitable. What sort of profit? For Alex Jones it's turning that emotion into purchases of survival gear and vitality supplements. For a redditor they might consider upvotes profitable. Or maybe they just want to influence public opinion. No way of knowing for sure. R slash out of the loop. Ferratanion says. What is going on with the MLB players pants? Why are they see through? Is this is a money issue? I don't understand. Fanatics has money, the MLB has money. How did this happen? There's no way this was a deliberate choice right? Context. 
Insect Shelf 3 says. Answer, Fanatics produces sports apparel via exclusive licensing deals with the NFL, NBA, NHL, and the MLB. If you buy gear for your favorite team online, there is a very high chance that it is made by Fanatics. For a long time now, they have had a reputation for extremely poor quality control. Products will be cheaply made, with misalignment logos, improperly spaced letters, bad stitching, etc. But they have had no real incentive to improve QC, because they have no real competitors. Since 2020, Nike has been subcontracting the production of the uniforms players wear in game to Fanatics. Fanatics produces the designs given to them by Nike. This year, players are wearing the new Nike Vapor Premier jerseys, which are designed to be lighter and performance wear, according to the MLB commissioner. This, combined with poor QC from Fanatics, have resulted in the uniforms being worn during spring training appearing like cheap knockoffs, which have been flooding social media recently as spring training kicks off. Among the quality issues I mentioned above, it turns out the white pants on the new jerseys are actually transparent, you can see the ends of the jersey through the pants, if the player has tucked them in. The uproar is a combination of a lot of factors. Pent up frustration with the stranglehold Fanatics has on the sports apparel market, consistently poor QC on their products, and growing discontent with the tenure of the current MLB commissioner are nothing new. But to a lot of fans who love baseball, seeing how bad the new jerseys is a sign that the sport is heading in a bad direction. If the league is willing to have players wear jerseys of such poor quality, what does that say about how much they care about the game people adore? You will probably see similar headlines again when Fanatics begins producing game-worn jerseys for the NHL soon, and I'm sure that 90% of this comment will still be relevant when that happens. Floundering Wolverine says. Frick Rob Manfred. Truly, and sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, that man is perhaps the worst thing about modern baseball. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.